The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the October 22nd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out how the bulls and bears, how the buyers and sellers, what they're communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right, if you're listening at the normal time, time, time frame slot, we're recording this show between eight and nine. We'll make it as pertinent as we can for you during that uh, time segment. If you are listening in live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Again, if you're listening between eight and nine, go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question in, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a little bit of a mixed bag in the equity futures. You've got the Dow uh, equity futures up 78 points, while the NASDAQ is off 37, primarily, uh, primarily fueled by um, Intel, Snap, Google, Facebook. So we'll take a look at those charts, see where they're trading into. Uh, you've got, uh, it's funny, I've got platinum futures up there with the equities. You've got the ES Mini up four points. The uh, Russell is up eight. Uh, over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. The Shanghai down just a bit, 12 points. The other markets were to the upside. The Nikkei up 96. The Hang Seng up 109. It was flat in the uh, Australian 200, up 0.1 out there. Gold's up 12 bucks, trading out at 1794. Silver's up 26 cents, a little over 1%. She's trading at 2443. Lights we crude trading up at 8334. Copper's up a tad. You've got 30 year Treasury off six ticks. U.S. dollar index is down 10 pennies. I've got about a 10-minute delay on uh, that. And uh, so what's all that mean, or how does Stevie start his day? One of the first things, I'll show you one of the uh, tables that subscribers get each morning out here, and it helps me to understand what the markets are communicating to us. So it's this table right here. It takes a look at various different instruments, as you can see down the left-hand side. And then what I give you is the market outlook, or what I give subscribers is the market outlook for various time frames. So we've got the daily, weekly, monthly, we have a 15 minute, we've got a 30 minute, 65 minute, 130. And all these signals will change as the market um, moves higher or lower, how the market's responding to its TAS market profile, so how it's responding to the oscillator and change line. And that generates all those signals out there. The other thing that I do is from a daily standpoint, because it can only condense so much onto one page out here, but I've got the daily signals as well. In other words, bottom signals, topping signals, that's the Rhodes Mintum indicator. So here you've got a bottom that was confirmed in uh, Palladium. I don't know when that occurred. I'm not saying that was today, by the way, just that there's a bottom signal in there. We had the natural gas had that top confirmed. We've talked about that over the last couple of days out here. But the other thing we can take a look at that is really a, little, a bit more active are the TD9 counts. So for example, uh, Cocoa Futures, if you traded Cocoa, you'd wanna know that this has a valid TD9 bottom signal out here. Now. Uh, today's likely, uh, or yesterday's was likely bar nine, so today could be a lower low and still uh, maintain that uh, program, uh, maintain that pattern out here. There's also a, a potential TD9 count top in the real estate sector. Yesterday would have been bar number eight that it closed at. So this is helpful for those people that are in those instruments to take a look and possibly shore up uh, uh, stops and things of that sort. I've also got the Chapman wave counts out here. Letter G, the capital letter G, they identify potential topping signals. So we've got one inside the XLE. We've got one inside the XLF. You've got one inside the XLY. Now, you won't get a confirmed G until you make a lower high 
for those patterns. But those would be instruments that people would take a look at because you've got those type of topping signals that are out there. So that'd be the first thing that, that, that I would do. Another thing that I do, and with subscribers, is we try to understand what's the message of the markets overnight from an international standpoint. So what we take a look at is we take a look at the Shanghai, the Hang Seng, the Nikkei, also take a look at the DAX and the FTSE. So those are the five core international indices that uh, I take a look at. If we take a look at the Shanghai out here, last night, Price was testing, and it rejected that green oscillator and change line. So that suggests a further retracement. In the case of the Hang Seng, and I didn't go to those charts, I can also go to my international charts, and it will show that the Hang Seng has generated a TD9 count top. Now, what we should see take place here, so one of two things, either this top holds, and if this top holds, price will then make its way back to the oscillator and change line. That's in the 25,194 level. On the other hand, if price is able to close above yesterday's high, that's the high of the pattern. I know it's the high of the pattern because I've got a letter B on top of it, so my system lets me know that right away. That's part of the Chapman wave count. And if we take a look at if price were able to close above 26,229, that tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside. Now, where would price take us on that strong momentum move? Well, the next area would be its next TD9 breakdown level of 27,786. So for those of you interested in trading the Hang Seng, you want to be paying close attention to uh, either the move to the upside, again, just to close above uh, the high from uh, yesterday, will signal that move higher, where right now you should be anticipating and planning to move back to that oscillator and change line. In the case of the DK, close back below. It's got a uh, A to B equals CD pattern. It's got a confirmed Gartley sell pattern. So that was confirmed yesterday when uh, price had gapped down. So you can see the A to B, or I'll draw that A to B equals CD pattern in here. And the reason why you want to understand what's going on with the international markets is because certainly they can have an impact on the U.S. market. So here's the A to B equals CD pattern. It gets confirmed with that gap to the downside. Price is now below its oscillator and change line. That suggests a move towards the swing point back here from the trading day of, let's get to it, the trading day of uh, October the uh, 6th. We take a look at the DAX out here. So the DAX generated a sell the D point, and it generated that with this little bear sash candle on October 18th. Now, if price is able to close today above 15,598.58, that will negate that pattern, and then that could be even setting up another A to B equals CD to the upside. If you take a look at the FTSE, the FTSE has a confirmed sell the D point, and, uh, but if price is able to take out the resistance level, which is 72.4385, that will suggest a further move higher. U.S. dollar index, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That was confirmed with this bearish engulfing candle. Price right now is inside the daily profiles. Now, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, you'll see that so far the low of the pattern was yesterday. That was bar number seven. So if we see a move lower inside the U.S. dollar index, it could, and this is a move lower below that low. By the way, what was that low yesterday? Let me give that to you. That low was 93.475. Any move below, it doesn't have to be a close below, but any move below today, Monday or Tuesday would trigger a TD9 count bottom. So, and you've got the exact opposite pattern inside the euro. You can see the euro generated bar number seven yesterday, the counterpart being the U.S. dollar index out here. Not that that's the only thing that is inside the U.S. dollar index, but it is the largest influencing factor because of its 57% weighting in there. If we take a look at the uh, Japanese uh, yen, uh, we can see that it identified or formed a TD9 count top. And if price can close below that green oscillator and change line, that suggests a further retracement. So that's what's going on in the international markets. What's going on in the U.S.? Okay, so we take, so well, how do we summarize all this? The charts here tell us that the Shanghai should head lower. The Hang Seng should head lower. The Nikkei should head lower. So we've got, we understand what's going on in Asia out there. In the case of the DAX and the FTSE, they both have topping patterns in place as we speak. So we'll be back from this break in a moment. We'll go take a look at the U.S. markets. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're recording the show this morning between 8 and 8.30 if you're listening in the normal time frame. Thanks so much for doing that. We'll be back to normal programming on uh, Monday. But in the meantime, right now, we're taking a look at the U.S. equity future. So in that first segment, we took a look at what was going around the globe. We know that uh, we've got uh, topping patterns really in all the five core indices that we take a look at. But when it comes to the U.S., we don't. We have A to B equal CD patterns that are present at least in the ES, NQ, and the Adao. And now we've got another pattern that may unfold here come next week, and that's the TD9 count pattern. So today should form bar number seven for all four of these equity instruments. However, what's unique about the ES, the NQ, and the Dow is that their oscillator and change lines, those are the green and red lines that you see on my uh, chart out here, the squiggly lines, those changed colors a handful of days ago. Now, when that changes color, that's when the price oscillator actually gets to zero. And what typically happens is that over the coming sessions, I don't know how many, we see price and that line catch up to each other. So we know that that is a phenomena that occurs. I can't tell you why, not because I can't tell you why, but because I can't tell you why. I just know that it happens. I know that it works that way. I watch it happen all of the time. And so that's what we should expect. So what this these charts are communicating to you and I is that we should see at least bar number eight form out there. And that says we should see a higher high come Monday uh, because today will be or should become bar number seven. The only it, it, that's assuming here, by the way, that's assuming that we don't get bearish reversal candles. If we were to get bearish reversal candles today, then we would have a sell the D point pattern for the ES, the NQ and the Dow. So that's the only caveat. So short of that, what is it that we should anticipate? So short of that, we should anticipate that the ES and all four of these will actually go on to form TD9 count tops. That would occur between Monday and Wednesday of next week. And then when those tops take place, we should see price pull back to the oscillator and change line. Maybe it does more than that, but that would be the first thing that we would be looking for. I, I haven't left out the Russell 2000 on purpose or anything. It's just that its oscillator and change line uh, change colors and already had that bullish test as it was changing colors. So not that it price won't pull back there. It's just more clear the signal that is or the signals in the ES, the NQ and the Adal. So 
if the U.S. markets are going to continue to move higher, it's the DAX that would be most in jeopardy, I would think, of negating its sell signal out there. And we took a look at that during that opening. So what is it we should anticipate here? I think right now, again, short of a bearish reversal candle uh, on the daily time frame, we should expect price to continue to move higher. Now, is there any potential that we see those bearish reversal candle signals out here? Uh, let's go take a look at the intraday charts for these four equity future contracts. So here you've got the ES mini in the upper left. I'm going to pull this back just a tad. And what we can see out here is, uh, you know, do I have a topping pattern? No, not really. Uh, there was a rose momentum indicator signal that triggered, but uh, that failed uh, or failed to produce a topping pattern at the 730 session out here. So I don't have a topping signal there. Price testing support, the oscillator and change line. Key level of support here during the day, at least right now, on the 30-minute time frame is going to be 4532. So if you see a close below 4532, that's going to signal lower price. If you see a close below 15406 in the NQ, that's going to signal lower price out there. If you see a close below 35482 inside the Dow equity future contract, that's going to signal lower price. It's the Russell 2000, let me just update this chart here, that has generated or appears to be generating. This bar is not over. We need eight more minutes. But it's a pretty decent chance that this is going to form a road momentum indicator top. So what does that mean? That means we should see the Russell 2000 pull back to the area of 2293 to 2296. The reason I give you that area is because it's a bullish structured 30 minute profile. Now, if closes, if price closes below 2293, that signals lower price. So if these short term levels of support fail, then that opens up that possibility of what could form today. We'd want to see what other patterns are going on on the short term time frame. We don't have that signal now, but at least you know what to be looking for. And certainly if this is 122 in the afternoon, you can make a determination whether or not the ES is trading below 4532 or not, or the NQ 15406. Now, there's going to be new profiles that form between now 822 in the morning and 122 in the afternoon out there. But still, if those levels fail, that's providing you with a, a signal. So let's do this. We've got a question that has come in. I don't want to get behind on those. Uh, and the first question coming in is from uh, SNP in the Tiger's Den. And his question is about PayPal. And he's looking for an entry price into PayPal. So we're going to switch over, take a look at my black background charts. The black background charts, what they're providing us with is daily, weekly, and monthly profile information, as well as other patterns that we can go ahead and draw in there. Now, uh, in the case of PayPal, here's what we know. We know that right now, as far as a support level, the only support level, S&P, that you're dealing with is potentially the bottom of its monthly profile. And that's priced at 24050 You've got A to B equals CD down patterns inside the daily and weekly. I only have it drawn in on the weekly right now. And you can see that that's a wide-ranging bar coming into the 1.272 expansion. That's the C to D expansion. Markets typically do not end on wide ranging bars. So even though 240.50 is a support level, uh, if you were to take that trade, uh, that is a super aggressive trader. Um, and I don't know, S&P, you may be out there, but that's the only support level that I see. But with the wide ranging bars over the last two days inside the inside of PayPal, now is not the time. And I don't know whether that level will hold or not, but you need some other kind of signal out here. So this suggests if price closes below 240.50, on a monthly basis, so we won't have that right for uh, until next week, I believe, or or is it the week after when the actual uh, trading uh, uh, calendar uh, ends? I I don't know specifically what's the the 18th. Yeah, it's got to be the following week. Uh, so you know that's a key level that you've got to wait uh, another 10 days or so before you get that information. Now let's pull over my PayPal charts, though. The other white background charts they provide us weather signals. So it's kind of like what's there. Here's the well, let's get to the daily time frame. So on the daily time frame, the next level of potential support, the daily is also in wave number seven, that's letter G, uh, would be 235.11. So, you know, let's take a look at the, as price approaches that area. You can see the A to B equals CD down pattern on a daily basis. If you get a bullish reversal candle at that pattern, then that would be the first signal of a potential bottom. On a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart says, hey, I may take a ride on the reading, and that reading gets us down to 193.92. So that is truly open, but we'll watch the daily time frame charts to see if there's any kind of 
by the D point pattern that forms. I want this thing to leave. I don't know. Well, there we go. And uh, so, but on the weekly chart out here, S&P, you're looking at 193.92 as a price target. On the monthly time frame chart, if price closes below the bottom of that monthly profile, then its target becomes 223.09. So everything that we look at here, daily, weekly, and monthly, they just simply suggest lower price. And I think you got to keep your hands in your pocket at this moment and wait to see if price gets down to those lower levels out there. So hope that helps you out, SNP. We've got another request inside the Tiger's Den. This is coming from Bob A. And Bob wants to take a look at the GDX out here. So as we pull up the charts for the GDX, let me uh, do that uh, here as well on screen. And the GDX, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here. And I believe there was a TD9 count top. Uh, in fact, I know there was. That TD9 count top took place on October 14th. So here's October 14th. And a close above that level, uh, Bob, that level, by the way, is 32.93. A close above 32.93 will negate that pattern. And that'll suggest that the next price target to the upside for the GDX would be 33.73. The other level to watch today, Bob, is 33.05. A close above that, that would be a close above the top of the weekly profile. That would signal a change in trend to the upside. See Roads with TFN. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So I'd be remiss to uh, not take a look at uh, Goldilocks after just taking a look at the GDX out there. And uh, we can see gold is trading up right now. It's trading out at 1801. So uh, here's our four panel set of charts. We've got daily, weekly, monthly, and uh, quarterly timeframes out here. So very helpful in understanding our market profiles. I'm using my synthetic contract so that I can uh, properly stitch together these contracts to provide us with these profile levels. They provide us with that support and resistance area. So in the case of gold, what you're really looking for today, there's a couple of different things. The first thing, the most ideal thing, would be for price to close above the high from October 14th. That high was 1801.90. <clears throat> the reason is because that generated a sell the D point pattern. And when that sell the D point pattern occurred out here, that was because of that bearish engulfing candle, three river evening star pattern that formed on the trading day of October 15th. Now, the odd thing was, not odd, but at the same time that it confirmed the sell signal, it also pulled right back to support. An old resistance, which is the top of the profile, became support. We saw price just uh, trade sideways the following day, close back above the daily profile back on October the 19th out there. And now if price can take out that high, that'll set up a new A to B equals CD to the upside. So if we take a look at that pattern, we'll put that in. We don't have confirmation. It'll be dependent upon today's close. But right now, that's the pattern that looks like is in play out here. So the A point I'm going to use is the low from September 29th. And the B point is going to be the high from October 14th and the retracement down in to the October 18th level. That would give us a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD with a price projection of 1841. Now, what I also want to do is we're going to be for, and we'll come back to that, is I want to move over and take a look at the weekly time frame chart. So we know that closing above a resistance area that was established by that sell the D point, it's bearish reversal candle, a close above that, 1801.90, would be a bullish outcome. It would additionally be a bullish outcome if we get a close above 1790.60. 1790.60, we're now looking at the weekly time frame chart as the center of its bullish structured profile. When price closes below a bullish structured profile, as it did the week of of September 13th and then it did so the following week and it did so the week after and it did so the week after and again uh, last week out there when price closes below a bottom of weekly profile that gives us a change in trend signal out here now as one possibility and then counter trend rallies will typically find resistance at the center of that bullish structured profile. And we can see how that was tested last week, was tested during the week of uh, September 20th as well. So a close above 1790.60 would be a bullish outcome. When you typically close above the center of a bullish structured profile, that will give you the, uh, the momentum to trade up to the top. So now we've got one price projection of price close above 1801.90. And really, that's the level that we want to go ahead and establish at the at, at the end of the day anyways, right? Because just close above 1790.60 and below 1801.90 kind of leaves us in the uh, guessing zone out there. We don't want to be in the guessing zone. So let's just change it to 1801.90. If you see a close above that, that says price is headed to 1838 or 1841. 1838 simply because that's the top of that weekly profile. If price gets above that, the next profile that comes into play is the monthly profile. That's at 1866. And that ties into the 1.272 expansion on that A to B equals CD pattern that I've got for the daily time frame. And that is more likely the outcome if we get a close above 1801. Why is that more likely the outcome? Because this was only a 50% retracement on that uh, B to C leg out there. And that typically says if you get something less than a 0.618 retracement, odds favor that you're going to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. And as Tom O'Brien has taught each of us, when gold makes its A to B equals CD patterns, it usually does more than a one-to-one -one pattern anyway out there. But those would be the signals coming from this. So back to if, in fact, gold closes above 18190, then with regard to the uh, GDX out there, that's just simply going to continue to motor higher. If we we're try if we're trying to answer the question, which I think would be the next question is, if you're listening at 8.34 in the morning, is gold going to hold out here? So how do we answer that question? Well, the way I like to answer it is just simply go let the charts answer that for us. So what we're looking for here, I'm going to change over to my eight panel charts for gold. And as we do it, here we've got monthly, and this gives us a little bit more information because I've got my Chapman wave counts, I've got my TD9 counts, I've got TD9 count breakdown resistance and so forth. So we just look at short-term time frames right now. I'm going to just go to the five hour. I'm going to go from lower right back over to the uh, uh, lower left out here. So we're going to start with the five hour chart. What's the five hour chart tell us right now? Price is taking, I'm going to expand it out for you, make it a little bit easier for you to read. Price right now is taking, by the way, this bar here is going to complete at, can I figure that out? Give me a moment. I think it is 10. I just want to make sure. Uh, no, it's 9. 
Okay, so uh, that's cool. So this bar is closing in, in about 25 minutes, and a close above 1796.80 is a bullish outcome. And I would suggest to run up to the 1808 level. As we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, no topping signal out here. So, yeah, it looks like the five-hour chart is saying, yeah, this rally can hold. If I take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, it's doing something similar to the five-hour. It's taking on its TD9 count resistance. That's at 1797. Now, we can see that on the four-hour chart, this top with a TD9 count pattern. So the real key level, the threshold level that price needs to close above on this chart to signal that, yeah, this is going to hold, is going to be a move above, a close above 1801.90. Well, that sounds familiar, 1801.90. Yeah, that's that swing point on the daily time frame. Okay, the 120-minute time frame chart. Here's where they, the 120-minute chart says, hey, you know what, folks? Not so fast. Why is it not so fast? Because it's got a TD9 count top out here that's going to form during this session. This session here, this bar does not complete until 10 o'clock. So we've got an hour and a half, basically. But if price can, so what you're, what you're, what you're looking for then at 10 o'clock in the morning is whatever this high is. Right now, the present high of this bar, and I'm not saying this is going to be the high come 10 o'clock, but let's just say this was 10 o'clock, and the high here is 1801.20. If price were to close above that, by the way, the next two-hour chart would take us from 10 till noon. So if at noon price is trading above the high of this bar, whatever that is, that is a very bullish signal out there. But the two-hour time frame chart says not so fast. The 60-minute chart says not so fast as well. Why? Because it is in wave number seven. That is letter G. So we know that that could be a top as well. So we just want to keep an eye on that. You have to have a lower high in order to confirm that. We don't have that. I don't believe my letter will move over there until this bar closes, and that's not for another 24 minutes out here. If we look to the 30-minute time frame chart, we do not have any kind of a topping signal, although it, too, is going to be in wave number seven. That is letter G out here. So um, the question question is, will this level hold? The longer term charts say yes, but the short term time frame charts, the 30 minute, the 60 minute, and the 240, those are the 12, I'm sorry, the 120, those are the charts to be watching intraday if you're a gold trader to look for additional signals there. Um, so have I answered the question, is, is it going to hold? I haven't because I don't have that answer. If we had a clear answer here amongst these charts, well, we would give it to you. It looks good, but we've got to see what takes place on the short-term time frames first. So I hope that helps everybody else out with regard to gold, the GDX out there. And um, I do have another question that has come in. And this was to take a look at FANG, F-A-N-G. So let's uh, change screens out here. Let's get back to my black panel screen where we'll begin taking a look at uh, FANG. We'll get that uh, populated on the uh, screen, and the individual is looking for an entry price. So what i got to find is my three time frame. Here we go. So when we take a look at FANG, what I can share with you yesterday, was, well, uh, here's what we know about FANG, and then we'll go take a look at my uh, my short-term, my, my white background charts. Actually, I've got to get to those here. So give me a moment just to do that. Um, okay, perfect. So here's what we know about FANG. It's trading above the top of the daily, above the top of the weekly, and above the top of the monthly profiles. So that is all bullish information. But what this set of charts doesn't tell us is there's some kind of topping pattern that's out there where we would expect a pullback. If we expect a pullback, folks, and you look at these charts, where would that first pullback find support or potentially find support? And you're exactly correct. 105.95, old resistance, the top of a profile, can become support. That's already been tested and rejected once. So on a pullback in FANG, 105.95 could be an entry area. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. If you're listening at the normal time, 1.42 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. We recorded this show between 8 and 9, and uh, we're taking a look at FANG out here. We can see that uh, FANG had triggered a roads momentum indicator signal. Did that about three or four days ago. And that's how it formed its bottom, by the way, back here on uh, August the uh, 20th. It was confirmed with that uh, bullish engulfing candle. So when these signals pop up, they need to. We, I need confirmation of them. That's the A to B equals CD pattern, the roads momentum indicator uh, pattern out here. And the way that we get that confirmation we let the market talk to us, communicate to us. That means you want to understand your bullish and bearish reversal candles. You really only need to understand seven of them. I mean, there is a gazillion that people have created over time, but there's really seven. All you need to, if you can learn the seven bullish ones, which I teach you, and just subscribe to Mastering Probability as a workshop that will teach you that. If you can learn the seven uh, bullish or bearish, the exact opposite. So all you need to really learn is seven, and then you've got 14 candles. In this case here, uh, this was the con the actual Rhodes Mintum Indicator top was confirmed yesterday because that was a bear sash candle. So the very first price target is going to be 105.95. If price were to close below 105.95, shoot, that opens up a move to 94.73 to 93.13 out there. So that's the first target. What you'd like to see as price pulls back to a support area, 105.95 is one of those. You like to see on a short-term time frame some type of pattern set up, some type of bottoming pattern. Unfortunately, as we speak right now, I don't really have that. All that I can see when I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart for FANG is a sideways consolidation. Is that good enough for a bottoming pattern? It could be. just depends on your aggression. I don't know where FANG is trading right now in the uh, pre-market. I guess we can take a real quick uh, peek out here. Don't know if this – I don't know what's inside this instrument uh, and uh, whether this is uh, – but let's go take a quick peek here. Let me get to this chart here. Put in FANG. And uh, FANG right now is trading at 109. So it's trading higher. 109.95 out there, so that's not being impacted uh, by the uh, by some of the sell-off that we've seen inside the NQ. So uh, yeah, I I I think you just got to be patient because of the topping signal that came in yesterday. So I hope that helps you out. Another question coming in. This is from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants to take a look at IBM, and uh, and Brent has uh, posed a, an interesting question here. He's looking for. Uh, let's just read the question. Would appreciate your analysis if IBM looks like it confirmed an A to B equals CD pattern on the weekly, looking for levels to the downside. 
have for supporter potential buy areas. Have a fantastic weekend. Hey, you do the same as well, Brent, and thanks so much. So, Brent, I want to teach you something and, and everybody else as well. So if I was drawing the A to B equals CD pattern at this stage here, so I've moved back a couple of weeks, then the A to B equals CD pattern I believe that Brent is talking about would look like this. And it's very clear. Uh, so the A point out here is the high from June the 7th on a weekly basis. The B point out here is going to be the low from July 19th. And at this stage here, let's see, the higher high, I think, was 144.92, 144. Yeah, it's going to be the same candle. So that would be the C point. So I'm now going to pull the chart back over. And Brett would be correct if that were the actual A to B equals CD pattern that we're in place right now, but it's not. And the reason that it's not is because there was a higher high, Brent, that formed out here on the trading session of October the 4th out there. So even though we would have perhaps drawn our A to B equals CD pattern in there earlier, once uh, price reveals additional information to us, we have to draw in the new pattern. So the actual A to B equals CD, let's draw this in here, give me a moment. The actual A to B equals CD that's in place right now looks like this, the same A point. And that is going to be the high from June the 7th, or the week that began June 7th. The B point now is going to be the low from September 20th. And the C point is going to be that high. That was the higher high uh, from October 4th. Now what we can see here is this new A to B equals CD on a weekly basis so, uh, gives us the 125.94 level. But that is being approached with a wide-ranging bar. We discussed that earlier. Markets don't end on a wide-ranging bar. Additionally, the way that... Uh, price has propelled itself in IBM off of that C point with that wide range of bar says way more than a one to one A to B equals CD. So those levels become the 1.272 is 120, 113, 105. Now let's uh, close this chart back up and see where weekly or monthly profiles are. Well, there's a monthly bullish structured profile in the 120.91 level. 120.91 gets us into the 1.272 area. So I think that is the next level to observe and watch. Of course, if that were to occur, what we'd want to see with regard to IBM is some kind of bottoming pattern on its daily time frame chart. And we, we don't have that now. We're just simply going to have to come back to it. Uh, as far as other areas or other signals or other levels of support out here, what I have to do is add some additional TD9 count uh, lines out here. Let me do that. Let me pull this up on the uh, screen. Let me just change this here to uh, maybe just put in uh, five, see where the next levels are that pop up for potential support. So those levels get take us to 127.49. Well, basically, we're at, we're at that level as of yesterday, 118.76. So those are areas, Brent, to, to watch out there. And, and thanks for writing in. Uh, and hopefully just that little nuance with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern uh, helps you out. And with regard to the A to B equals CD patterns, the, the, market's the market's responsibility is to provide us with new information all the time. And when it does that, then we have to come back and change our outlook. So in other words, we don't get married to any one pattern. If the market reveals new information, we use that information to redraw that. The other question that we've got that's in the uh, Tiger's Den is to take a look at uh, Cliffs Natural Resource, no, Cleveland Cliffs out here, and that is CLF is the ticker symbol. And uh, what was the question? I don't know what it was. Uh, Cliff, if you have time. Okay. So we're taking a look at what is Cleveland Cliffs doing? Well, it's really consolidated with inside each of its profiles daily. So consolidated between the price levels of 2041 to 2223. Weekly, brand new weekly profile. That's between 1950 and 23.99. Uh, the monthly, new monthly profile between 16.89 and 25.13. So, with regard to CLF, boy, just consolidation from a profile standpoint. What's it doing on the daily time frame out here? So let's go take a look at it. The daily time frame for Cliff shows what? It shows a nice Rhodesman to indicator bottom, um, and uh, I don't see any kind of a top. This suggests that price should go target 24.24. Not necessarily today. It's next battle. We already took a look at those. Those were the profile levels. So if price can overcome 22.23, the next upside target would be 24.24. The monthly chart, what do we see here? The monthly chart tells us what? Not much, nothing additional to add here. So I think the daily ought to be the one that takes over that will influence the uh, weekly. The monthly time frame shows you that price pulled back after forming wave number seven. That's letter G. 
and a pullback to test support. That's that green oscillator and change line. So as long as S&P, as long as price remains above 1916 out here, then it is bullish. I come back to the daily if you were looking for some type of bottoming signal out here. The only bottoming signal would be prices pulled back to test support, which is either the bottom of the profile or the oscillator and change line. So it's in that support level. So if you were looking to take a uh, entry into CLF. I don't know that that's what you're looking for. You'd really have to go down to the short-term time frames and find something out here. I don't see anything that is present on my screen as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out with regard to CLF. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. Dan from Boston out here wants to take a uh, look at, um, at uh, natural gas. So for natural gas, let's do this here. We can, we can look at uh, both sets. Oh, we can't. We're going we're gonna to take a look at natural gas when we get back from this break out here. But, Dan, what I'll put up on my screen here during the break so that you can take a look at it is uh, the natural gas contract. Here we go. Or contracts as we see them. And here you're going to see right now that there's a descending trend line that price is running into. See roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Go 
welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at natural gas. We're looking at the uh, November uh, contract, uh, although we're going to be switching over to uh, December. So we're going to look at both of them. So first, let's just take a look at the uh, November contract. The November contract formed a road momentum indicator top. Now, you don't see that here, so you just have to trust me. Uh, and it completed that pattern when it, on October the 6th when it formed that bear sash candle. Now, when you form a top out here, that says, okay, price should go back to support. Now, in the case of the uh, uh, November contract, the support levels, because price was trading above the top of the profile or the top of the profile or the center or bottom. Well, price actually pulled all the way back to the bottom of its bull structured profile. It did that and it held and it did it on October 19th. So, in other words, its work to the downside was done, support it held. Now what has transpired here is a new profile is forming. And that new profile for this contract is above the prior profile. And that would be a bullish message. But there's three more days till expiration on this contract, so we're really going to have to move over into the December contract. Well, in the December contract, it too provided, it too generated a new profile. And Dan, what I want you to notice is that the center or the bottom of this profile <clears throat> is above the uh, is above the prior bottom. The top is above the prior high, so that's bullish in nature. So we know that price pullback tested support, and if price can close above the center, which is 548, that's where it's trading right now at about 550, what this would signal to you and I is price should make its way to the 590 area out there. So that's what these charts here shows for natural gas. What we can also do is we can go take a look at my eight panel charts here real quickly just to close out the show, see if there's any other <coughs> signals with regard to natural gas. For example, <coughs> On a 30-minute time frame chart, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside, but no bullish reversal candle, or bearish reversal candle, I should say. So price should continue to move higher. No topping pattern. None on the 60-minute, none on the 120-minute, none on the 240, none on the 300-minute, other than price just testing the top of its profile, 530. So a close above that presumably would be a bullish outcome. So in this case here, it looks like natural gas wants to trade higher. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Those of you that joined us live between 8 and 9, very much appreciate it. I want everybody to have a fantastic weekend out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you again on Monday at 1 o'clock. Take care, folks.